You're listening to a podcast from the Today programme on BBC Radio 4. The Prince of Wales is a man with strong views, strong beliefs, a passion for causes close to his heart, including helping young people and the environment. There have been issues that he's been discussing with his son, Prince Harry, in private, of course, for years. But now, for Prince Harry's guest editorship this morning, they have let the microphones in as they reflect on a busy 2017 and on the year ahead. Father, Paul... Uh, good morning. Very nice to see. You. Very nice to see you. Thank you for uh, thank you for allowing me to interview you. Well, firstly, it's been an incredibly busy year for you, as it has been for for numerous people. You've um, noticed. Yeah, I have. I have noticed. You've met thousands of people this year. Um, is there is there one person that's really that's really stood out above the rest for you? Well, you're right about meeting an awful lot of people. Obviously, I meet endlessly marvelous people who are doing fantastic things. But finally, one of the people who did rather stand out for me was a a remarkable youngish Iraqi Christian priest Mm -hmm. who came to see me with a group of other people and told me the horrifying story of how he'd been captured by Daesh, you know, Mm -hmm. by ISIS, and tortured and treated abominably and threatened with being beheaded at every moment of the day or night. Finally, somehow, he he, um, escaped or somehow got away or whatever, but he was telling me, despite all this horror that he went through, and he could still find it in his heart to forgive them. And this was the thing that I could not mm-hmm. get over, you know, how remarkable that sort of person is. And there are some wonderful people like that around the world who, on whom we really depend, I think, if we're going to have some sort of solution to all these horrifying mm-hmm. situations. And lots of young people that you've met as well over, over this last yes. year. Well, exciting young people. This is, um, yeah. well, lots of nice, exciting young people like you. <laughs> Very amusing. But uh, you. No, no, because there are people, you know, inevitably now, that quite a lot of people through the Prince's Trust over the last 41 years, mm. it's, whatever it is, 870,000 young people and rising. If you could pick one issue to focus on in 2018, so this coming year, what would it be? I mean, there's all sorts of issues that you <laughs> no, could choose, exactly. but I think you and I would probably both well, choose I mean, the same you thing. you know, because... So I probably bored you to tears for so many years. I mean, there's a whole lot of things I've tried to focus on over the over all these years that I felt needed attention. Mm-hmm. Not everybody else did, but maybe now, some years later, they're beginning to realise that what I was trying to say may not have been quite as dotty as they thought. But, mm-hmm. I mean, the issue really that has to go on being focused on big time, I think, is, is this one around... The whole issue of climate change, which, yeah. you know, now, now whether we like it or not, is the biggest threat multiplier we face. Because what's happening now is what I was dreading, which is that we're having to deal all the time with the symptoms that are springing up all around the world, mm-hmm. and which is divert, they're diverting us off down all these different channels to try and deal with ghastly conflicts and humanitarian and natural disasters and goodness knows what else. Everything. But at the root of it all, much of it, is, is climate change, which mm. is causing untold horrors in different parts of the world. And, of course, we sit here in this part of the world so often unaware of what's happening in Africa mm. or, you know, the Far East. But how, mu- how much more can we all take and how, how much more does nature have to... Yeah. How many more clues does she have no. to give us for, in well, order for everybody to say, hang on, say, hang on a second, this... It, this is not actually all doom and gloom because there is so much hope out there. The whole of the younger generation with technology mm-hmm. coming in, all these sort of things, whatever we think about the, the pros and cons, the solutions are out there. They, they already exist. Well, quite a lot of solutions do. I mean, I, think the, the, I, I personally believe the mistake is to think that technology or clever technology will solve everything. Mm-hmm. It can solve a lot, yeah, of course. but it can't solve our relationship with nature. Our mindsets, yeah. Which is where I think it's gone wrong in that we've somehow... Uh, abandoned our proper connection with mm-hmm. nature. Somehow imagined we could manage without or we mm-hmm. battle against her in every way instead mm-hmm. of understanding that the future lies in <laughs> working in far greater harmony with nature and trying to ensure more successfully that our own economy better mimics and mirrors nature's Brilliant economy. So a circular so economy the, as opposed well, to a linear economy. Yeah, so that I, I, personally, I think, and there are quite a lot of people now who've been working on the whole concept of the circular economy, mm. as opposed to what we have 
we have now, which is a linear one, mm. which goes down an ever, ever, ever lengthening line. Which is waste, waste, waste. Well, it, you know, it exploits, it makes, and it yeah. wastes. And, uh, but the circular economy is much more one that mimics nature's remarkable capacity never to waste anything. Yeah. Moving on. Because otherwise, you know, I know that the two of us could end up talking about this for, for, uh, for hours and hours and hours, which we always do, but not with a microphone in front of us. But um, does, do, do you feel optimistic about the future uh, for the world that William, myself, your grandchildren and everybody else out there is going to inherit? I mean, there's so many reasons not to feel optimistic, I suppose, but there's also way more reasons from a younger generation's point of view to feel optimistic because I, I feel as though... The, the time has come when the pendulum needs to swing and we start to work with nature and appreciate what is already there. It's given to us. It's not something we've had to create. It's something that's given to us and something that we can learn from. And if we do protect it and look after it, then actually this huge increase in population and everything else, suddenly it becomes manageable if it's cared for and looked after. Right. So what can we, what can we be most optimistic about? My dear boy, if I may say so, the fact you're saying this gives me enormous optimism. Yes. Because I haven't obviously put you off. Yeah. No, you haven't. When banging on all these years. No. Because if you think that, that is really encouraging. Because what I've tried to do all these years is, is, is to make sure, if I can possibly, and I'm not sure I can, mm. ensure that you and your children, mm. my grandchildren, but also everybody else's grandchildren, mm -hmm. have a world fit to... You know, to live in that, that provides them with opportunity and at the same time, you know, the food and everything else that we need and that somehow we maintain the viability of our planet. The moment is the only one in this gigantic universe. It's a miracle, mm. I think, that everything is here. But it would be, that's why I've gone on about this, because for, to me, the unutterable tragedy, inexcusable one, would be if we destroyed this, this quite remarkable... Ecosystem. Planet, no, an ecosystem, every, because, because we know. depend on nature and the ecosystems for mm. our entire survival. Nature is our sustainer. Yeah, and I, and I, but I, to I totally but, see it and I yeah. totally understand it because of all these years of, of conversations that that we've been having. And I'm, you know, I, I do end up picking your brains more now than I than I ever have done. But you know, rest assured that that all of that information that you have that I know can be incredibly demoralizing I suppose because you're you're not seeing the results yet you know what's happening or you can see 15 years ago what was going to happen today and sure enough it's all happening despite the fact that we've had those conversations and despite the fact that I know how 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 you must feel coming from a younger generation it is incredibly exciting and incredibly I feel optimistic about the future because now is a real test a real test for humanity to be able to you know swing that pendulum and say right you know in, in order for for us to, to make our mark on this planet and in order to be able to preserve it, then we have to, A, work together, but B, also look after nature and allow it to give us those clues that you so rightly, so rightly talk about. Well, Donny Boy, it makes me very proud to think that you, <laughs> you understand. And that I'm listening. Is, well, that's even more amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul, thank you very, very much, and um, I hope you had a lovely Christmas and enjoy your new year. And to you, <laughs> happy Christmas. You can listen to more free content from the Today programme by going to www.bbc.co.uk forward slash today.